All right. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to the Store Manager Academy. I'm Stephen Farrell. I will be taking you through today's course. This is Lesson 1. This will be a, a lesson on new store manager tips. So congratulations. Some of you were probably uh, a brand new store manager. Some of you are maybe a more experienced manager, and some of you are just trying to get promoted at this point to become a store manager. Wherever you're at right now on this journey, I want to welcome you. And uh, for those of you that are that are new managers, I, I'm going to take a wild guess here and say you're probably excited, maybe a little nervous. Am I right? Well, that's completely normal. So please allow me to put your decision of becoming a manager in perspective. Have you ever heard someone say, that guy is a natural leader or that gal? Well, if you're not that guy, if you're not that gal, you're still in luck. The good news is that leadership really at its best is viewed as a set of skills. And with little preparation and training, it's a set of skills that you can learn. Through this training, I will help you understand how to immediately establish yourself as a store leader and how to begin setting goals and expectations with your team so you can set yourself up for success. Also help you understand what you need to do over the next 90 days to help you set the tone for the next 12 months. We'll be covering topics like building rapport with your team through this training and what it means to earn trust and show respect. I'll also address several useful communication tips that will help you better connect with your team. Overall, I'm going to challenge you to become more than simply the new boss. I want to help you be an authentic leader. When you've completed this lesson, you'll be ready to hit the ground running and be a lot more successful over the next few months. Are you ready? I hope so. Let's get started. So for new managers, and of course, just too many managers, leadership seems mysterious, as if what makes a successful leader is somehow intangible or undefinable, right? I want to let you in on a little secret. It's not. Leadership is actually a set of skills. Skills are behaviors anyone just like you, can learn with the right attitude and a, and a determination to learn and apply. Now, in order to prepare you for what is to come as a new manager, please know that what you did to get promoted, what you did to become a manager, will not work anymore. The type of work and skills that you or the type of the skills that you and, and, the, and the job well done um, and the positive attention that you are getting are not the same skills that you are going to need to be a successful leader of a team. It's just like a great salesman is, doesn't, just because you were the best salesman doesn't mean you're going to be a great leader of salesmen, all right? Leadership is a series of people-related skills. They help you facilitate the work of others. It's not about doing the work yourself anymore. I find that's the biggest mistake that new store managers make, and even tenured store managers, is they try to do the work themselves. You can't do that anymore. Your job is to, and I'm getting ahead of myself here, <laughs> your job is to plan, facilitate, structure the work of others. Pretty simple, right? Well, it's not as simple as it sounds. I want you to be the best leader that you can be. It is so vital that you understand the immense importance of being a leader. We all know that a bad boss can cause you a lot of stress, but a good boss has the amazing power to do good and to add value. You have the power to help others grow professionally and personally. You have the power to help them become more productive. All right, so next, uh, 
I want to talk about the first 90 days of being a new manager. And even if you're an existing manager, you can still you can still apply the same principles, especially if you haven't applied some of these some of these things that we're going to talk about right now. So whether you're new, whether you're a brand new manager, getting ready to be a manager, or whether you're an existing manager that's been in place for a while, this training is for everyone. First things first, you need to clarify your boss's expectations of you, not just performance expectations, but total expectations of running the store. You need to talk to your boss about any personnel changes. You'll get a pretty good idea when you get in there on who are your A players, who are liabilities to your company, and who are, you know, everybody else in the middle. Those people that are liabilities, You've got to talk to your boss about getting rid of them. This is the best time to do it, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, as well as your A players, any, any A players that you know can fill a key position within the store and you want to do it right away, talk to your boss about it. Make sure you cue him or her in and all staff changes up front. And that's just the first 90 days. Now, after a while, your boss will entrust you to make those decisions and, and only want to be involved in, in certain, certain positions. You need to ask for resources. You know, you may be going into a store that's broken, and you've already got to take care of personnel changes, and then you've got to re-merchandise the entire store. That's a lot of work that's being placed on your shoulders. Talk to your boss about getting other managers and associates from the territory or stores nearby to come in and do a blitz. Maybe it's an eight-hour blitz. Maybe it's a two-day blitz, whatever it may be. Get those resources, make it happen. Do not be afraid to ask for help. If you think you're going to be able to fix that store overnight, you are dead wrong. Trust me on this. I've tried it and I have failed. It wasn't until I asked for help and got the help of other store managers and other associates from surrounding stores, it wasn't until then that I was successful. Before then, I failed miserably. So ask for help. Get the resources you need. With on the same note, this is the only time that you're going to be able to spend on spend a little extra labor to make things happen in your store to accomplish the goals and the tasks that you're setting out to accomplish that you want your team to accomplish. Get that labor up front. Ask for it. I can't tell you how many stores got doubled the labor when a new store manager came in because there was a lot of things that needed to be fixed and corrected, and everybody was okay with that. So if everyone's okay with that, Take advantage of it. Now, if you don't need it, you don't need it, right? If you came into a perfect store, congratulations. You're part of the 1% that got a perfect store and you became a new manager. <laughs> but for everybody else, get that labor right away, up front. Don't delay. Really important here. As soon as possible, you want to schedule a full staff meeting. Every member of your team, whether they're you know, people that work on the floor, up front, in the back, and every, everywhere around, you need everybody there. Schedule a mandatory meeting. Saturdays are usually the best for most people because you can get it done early in the morning, you know, when the store hasn't opened yet, and, uh, you know, you can usually get the majority of your staff there. But make it mandatory. Make sure everyone's there. And... There's going to be a few important things you want to do during this meeting. Number one is you want to talk about big picture goals for, the, for this store over the next six to 12 months. Maybe it's re-merchandising the entire store. Uh, maybe it's going from double digits down in sales to, you know, single digits up in sales. Uh, maybe it's hitting certain key performance indicators that, you know, the store hasn't been hitting for a while. Maybe it's, you know, getting everybody up to standard and tra on, on customer service standards. Whatever it may be, set those big picture goals. Make sure it's big picture, right? Let your team aspire to those goals and be excited about it. Then you can break down the details individually, but try to make it big picture for your team. What I don't want you to do is to talk about all the bad things that have happened in the store before you took over the store or all the bad things about the past management, or whatever it may be, chances are the employees there know a whole lot more about what's gone in that store before you ever walked into the door, and they do not need to be reminded of all the mistakes that were made, okay? 
They don't want to, they don't want to talk about the bad. You don't need to focus on the bad. You need to focus on the good. So look back. You may have to look back six months, some stores even further, and make sure you recognize the milestones and accomplishments that that store has gone through in the past six months, maybe a year. Talk about those and really just build upon that. How you talk about how you want to make how those milestones were just incredible, and and you and you appreciate all their hard work, and and that's exactly what you want out of them is to accomplish those same milestones and improve upon those milestones and make them better. Just talk about the good accomplishments and how we're going to make them bigger and better. Focus on the good. And more importantly, guys, we get lost in in all the action items and, and things we want to do, and we forget why we do the things we do in the first place, why we have a high performance team, why we should have, you know, high merchandising standards and cleanliness standards and customer service standards. It's all about the customer experience, isn't it? It's all about the customer. So when we're talking about big picture goals, when we're talking about things we need to do in the store and the changes we need to make, we need to always be talking about the customer experience. That's that's the type of culture you want to build within your store. And I've got a lesson on culture that we're going to talk about in another week of this academy. But know that culture is just key in the success of your store, especially as a new store manager. If you don't set, set that culture or build that culture up front, you're really going to be in a lot of trouble down the road. I'll tell you that much right now. So build that culture around the customer experience. Maybe it's something different in your store, but in traditional retail, it's about the customer experience. Next thing you're going to do in the first 90 days, and again, I really – Really can't emphasize enough that this is this is within like the first week or two that you're there. You need to schedule a one-on-one sit down with every single associate, every single person in your store. Usually, you want to start with your you know management team, your assistant managers, then on to your department managers and team leads. However, your hierarchy works in the store. Start with the management because they're going to help you give you a a, a, a more a well-rounded picture of the issues that are going on in the store. They're going to talk to you about the good employees versus the bad versus everybody in between. And so when you're meeting with each associate one-on-one afterwards, you'll have a good idea of who's who and, and what are some of the hot buttons. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, uh, when you have these interviews, when you have these meetings with these with your associates, do not make the meeting about you and how you're going to change the store and how everything's going to be, you know, sunshine and lollipops and how everything was bad before and you're going to fix it and yada, 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 okay? I've seen it happen a million times and you're really losing the respect of your team before you're even able to gain their respect. You do not want to make this meeting about you. Make it about the person you're interviewing. Take notes. Ask them, you know, hey, what, what did you like about, you know, when you first got a job here, what was it that you liked so much about our company? And, you know, what were some of the promises that were made? What were some of your aspirations? You know, and, and where are you? Right? Where are you at right now in, in reaching those goals? What are some of the things you don't like? What are, the things, what are some of the things you're unhappy about? You know, your associates are going to be somewhat honest with you because you're, you're new but know that these are going to be surface answers, the initial ones. So you've got to peel back the onion. You've got to ask deeper questions. Well, tell me why. You, why, why, why do you say that? You know, tell me why you're saying that you know, you're not happy with uh, how, you know, the, how the staff is responding to, um, you know, or how the closing crew is doing, whatever it may be, right? You've got to peel back the onion, ask why, ask how, how does that make you feel, you know, Peel back that onion and really get a strong understanding, a solid understanding of where that employee is at right now uh, so you'll have a good understanding of how you can help them, which will in turn help you accomplish your goals or if that employee needs to go, right? At the end of the meeting, then you brief, you know, I look at it like a a, a pyramid, upside down pyramid. The, The you know, the, the 85% of the pyramid is going to be all about them, all about your employee. And then 10, 15% is going to be about you discussing your expectations and goals. That simple, guys. Don't overcomplicate this. Just get to know your team. Bottom line. 
Now, uh, at the conclusion of your meetings, gather all your notes together. You know, maybe you bring your, your assistant managers in, any managers you really trust that, you know, can, that they're going to help you with this. But you want to build a team of – or you want to build a list of your A players. You know, your, the 20% that do 80% of the work, right? Those are your A players. Make that list because those are the people you want to continue to grow and develop and your relationships with them. And really, you know, they're the ones that are going to make your store prosper. Then you're going to make a list of liabilities. These individuals that are at the bottom of the list that are just disgruntled, they hate their life, they hate their job, and you're going to help them find the job that they love by firing them or forcing them to quit. And I have, a, by the way, I've got a a lesson through this course on how you, when you have a difficult conversation with somebody with one of these liabilities, you give them two options. One, they follow your expectations, or two, they put in their two weeks notice today. And nine out of ten times I've gotten a liability, give me their resignation, and I've never had to fire them. And I'm going to teach you that through this course. But build a list of liabilities, partner with your DM or whoever your boss may be, and get rid of them as fast as possible. I want you to think about this for just, just real briefly. You, if you have one bad associate in your store, how do you think that affects your business? I mean, how much of your business are you losing? Do you know? Let's just, just, just throw a number out there. That, that bad associate, maybe they're a part-time associate working, what, three, four days a week, 25 hours a week. And let's just say they help. 50 customers a day. So they work, let's just say they work four days. They help 50 customers a day. I'm not a mathematician, but a mathematician, but how many customers is that? So let's see, uh, what, 200 customers a, a week that they're helping. They are negatively impacting 200 customers per week. Per week. That's almost a thousand a month with their negative and toxic attitude. I mean, how many, of that, how many customers is that in a year? 12,000? Are you kidding me? How long does a business last with one negative employee working part-time? Now, imagine if that employee is working full-time. Imagine if you have two negative, toxic employees working for you, or even worse, three or four or five. How long does a business last? I'll tell you, it doesn't last very long. And you look at those stores that are at the bottom of every list, and every metric in your company, they're in the double-digit red. Those stores have a broken culture, and they have a lot of negative people working in the store, a lot of toxic people, and they are just running customers out of town. And it's hard to recover from that. I'll tell you that much. It's extremely difficult. It can take over a year of good management to just fix six months of poor management. Understand that. Now, you're probably thinking, Stephen, well, who's ever, you know, I've got my top 10 A players or top five or top 20, whoever they may be, and then I've got my liabilities. Well, what about everybody else? I call everybody else your trainables. These are people that are in the middle. They're not your best employees. They're not your worst. They're in the middle. These people can be trained to be top performers, Okay, now you want to spend the majority of your focus on your top performers, your A players, making them bigger and better every single day. Okay, you just feed those lions and they're going to perform for you. And then you use those top performers to help the trainables, to train those middle feeders, those people in the middle that just aren't that great but not bad enough to fire. They're just kind of average. Use your A players to train those and you'll eventually start bringing some more A players from the trainable list up to the top of the, of the ladder. Um, now, uh, something that you're doing right now that is going to make the biggest difference in your career is you're feeding your learning curve. You're watching this video right now, which means you are trying to better yourself. You're trying to better your team. You're trying to better your situation. And that is just wonderful. That is what you need to be doing throughout your retail career. You need to identify areas of improvement, places that you know you're struggling in. Maybe you're not strong in, in retail finance. Maybe you're not strong in people management. Maybe you're not strong in upselling. I can't tell you how many really solid managers I've, I've, 
I've uh, had work for me that were horrible salesmen, and that's okay. You know, they were great at running stores, but they understood that they were not good at selling, and so they were willing to learn how to be a better salesman. So identify areas of, of you know, of your management uh, skills, your leadership skills that you might be struggling in, and start improving them. Commit. You've got to commit to improving your management skills every single day. Going through this academy is really going to help you with that. You know, I read every leadership book that's out there, that's available, and uh, you learn a lot of nice little catchy phrases that roll off the tongue and your team think you're smart, thinks you're really smart when you say them, but they really do nothing for you when it comes to running a store day to day, okay? I remember learning, you know, these time management principles, and I'm like, I go back to my store, and it's like, I can't apply these time management principles in running a store, and I had to just start from scratch. Now, luckily, I found, you know, a, a, a principle, a couple set of principles for time management that really work for store managers, and I'll share those with you throughout this course. So, again, back to feeding your learning curve. Go through this whole academy. You are going to be... 10 times ahead of everybody else, every other manager that's out there, by going through this course, you're really going to set yourself apart and set your team apart from, from all the average people. You're going to be in that A-player, you know, top-tier list. Uh, build your professional network. What does that mean? That means you need to be networking with all the businesses that are around you. Get involved in the community. Maybe your business doesn't, you know, the company you work for doesn't do much community involvement. Hopefully they do because that's sad if they don't. But if they, whether they do or don't, you need to get to know the business owners in your area because you want to network with them. Everybody, all these business owners that are out there, especially these small mom and pop shops, they want to grow their business. They want to net, they really want to network with you. They want to cross market to each other's customers so we can help each other. Um, look, another uh, thing you can do is look at the businesses that are right there next to you. Maybe you're in a strip mall or the buildings, you know, just on the same corner. You know, I, I remember I had 15 or 16 stores in one strip mall, and uh, I convinced everybody in the strip mall to do a sidewalk sale the last Saturday of the month, every single month, and every time we did that, I tell you, we were up double digits, like high double digits, 20 to 30% in most cases when we did that. And these other businesses in the strip mall, same scenario. It's just we created a destination by just pulling all these tents out and product and balloons and really just blowing it up, and uh, it, it works. So network with, your, with local businesses, build your professional network, Start now. Don't wait until you think you're comfortable. You can do that every day. When you go to lunch, get to know the business owners that are closest to you and then start, you know, spreading out from there. And then lastly, spend time learning about your business, about your product. Be an expert in the product that you sell. Be on the cutting edge of the information that's being released on that product. You know, you can actually, I've seen it so many times, store managers that have become experts in these products, we have category managers calling those store managers and, and asking them, what, do you think we should roll this product out, you know, ac across the whole chain? Or, you know, how much should we buy? Or do you think this is going to be a winner, you know, a hero or a loser? It's just you think that these category managers are, are, they know it all, but you find out not all of them do, right? And we find out that a lot of store managers just like you that are listening to their customers know exactly what is working, what's selling, and what's not. And you end up being a mouthpiece for that product, and it helps you really uh, stand out as a store manager and helps you build your career. Maybe you get promoted to a corporate position or, or an area manager or district manager, whatever it may be. But if you become a product expert, it's really going to make a difference in your career. It's going to help you in your career. I've got a section on that in the course we'll talk about. Um, really important is really important thing here is that you, as you're going through this 90-day process, that you define the team norms. What's acceptable? You, I'm not talking about the what's in the, all the the rules that are in your company handbook. Okay, I'm talking about what you think is acceptable. Maybe 
you're not allowed to wear jeans in your store, but you allow it, you allow it, you know, every time you hit your sales goals. If you hit, if your goal is uh, $250,000 for that week and you hit it, hey guys, we're gonna, everyone gets to wear jeans next Friday if we hit our sales goal for the week. Okay? Those are team norms. Or, you know, for me, it, what, you know, I, I really hated when I saw my, when I, when I'd see my associates use foul language around each other, around customers, and I just made it a rule. Guys, look, no foul language out on the sales floor. I don't even want to hear it in the break room. You want to use bad language, use it outside, off the property. There's no place here for that. We're professionals. We're here to do a job. We're here to take care of our customers, to create a unique in-store experience. And that foul language is not part of my unique store, in-store experience, so I don't want any part of it. Okay? That was my, that was my team norms. And, you know, people respected it. They respected me. And, and that's just how it was. So define your team ner- norms and make sure it's, it's in writing and it's posted. You know, if you want to have a Hawaiian shirt Friday, make it happen. Make sure it's in writing, okay? Now, uh, through this process, you're going to realize that as you're communicating with your team, you – have a decision-making style, whether you know it or not, where you, you are making certain decisions based on your decision-making style. I want to help you understand the three main decision-making styles so you know which style to use in what situation. And again, we'll have another course expanded on this, but I'm going to give, I'm just going to break it down to you, just three bullet points so you understand the three main decision-making styles. The first one is autocratic. Autocratic is your way or the highway. You are the single decision maker. Solo decision. Nobody's involved in the process. It's your way, highway, no input whatsoever. Okay? Second decision making style is collaborative. It's a partnership. It's you're collaborating with the team. You know, you want to get everybody's input. You you take note of their suggestions. They really feel like they're involved in that process of, you know, what, what, you know, maybe you're asking them what, you know, how should we re-merchandise this corner of the store? Or what do you think we should do to improve our sales in the store? And everybody gives their input. Or maybe it's just your management team. That's a collaborative approach. Now, you're going to have the final input on which direction you're going to go, but everybody had involvement in the process and they felt like, they had involvement and they contributed to the final decision, all right? And then lastly, there's the democratic approach where you are completely hands-off. You let the team decide, look, how are we going to increase sales this week, guys? I'm going to leave it up to you, you know, my department managers. I want you guys to, you know, come together and, and, and make a, you know, build a sales strategy that's going to help us hit our goal. So whatever that is, I'm, a, I'm just going to let you do it. You just tell me what you decided, and I'll, I'll, I'll approve it, and, and that's it. That's a democratic approach. So I want to ask you, I want you to think to yourself, which approach do you typically make? What is your decision-making style? Is it autocratic? Is it collaborative? Is it democratic? Or is it a mix of all three? I'd like to think you probably have all three. You know, every, every situation is a little bit different. But the main approach you should take as a, as a manager is collaborative. That is the best approach. Now, there are situations where it's not the best approach, but generally speaking, collaborative is a better approach than the other two. Now, this is a real uh, touchy subject here that, you know, I struggled with as a manager, and I know so many managers have struggled with it in the past, that you need to absolutely recognize that you are going to be spending a lot of time at work the first couple months, anywhere from two months to four months, you're going to be spending a lot of time at the store. And it's because you've got, you know, you've got a lot to learn, and you've got a lot of things you need to accomplish in a small window. And you want to look good, you know, for your peers and your boss. You really just want to make a difference, right? Um, so you need to set clear expectations with your family up front 
and let them know the next few months are going to be hard. It's going to be tasking. You're going to be spending a lot of time at work, and you're probably going to be a little cranky, a little stressed out, but it's necessary because you want to make sure you accomplish the goals that you've set out to accomplish the first few months of being a store manager. So, Because that just sets the tone for the rest of your career, right? The next 12 months are going to be predicated on the first three months. If I can tell you that right now from experience, hundreds of store managers, first three months will set the tone for the next 12 months. So let your family know up front, and uh, hopefully they're understanding. Some families aren't, and, and some are. Bless their hearts, the ones that are, uh, because it really does make a difference uh, having your family support you, be able to spend that time away from your family and be in the store. Now, the important thing here is when you are home for those few hours, <laughs> when you're not sleeping, make sure it's quality time. Make sure that you it truly is quality time with your family. Um, you really want to make sure that, you know, that one or two hours that you do have in the evening with your family, make it count. Okay, it's the best thing you can do. It'll help them. It'll help you and your family get through those first three or four months. Uh, now, uh, ever made an unpopular decision that got your team really upset at you? <laughs> I know I have, and that's okay. Uh, that's part of the job. It's part of being a manager, right? You've got to make unpopular decisions. Best advice I can give you is, number one, own it. Do not pass the blame up the corporate ladder. I can't tell you how many times I've heard a manager say to their team, like, hey, you know, I didn't want to do this, but corporate is rolling it out and we have to follow corporate. Like, what did you just do there? You just completely destroyed your own reputation. You just passed the buck up the corporate ladder. Oh, I don't want to, you know, corporate's making us do this. Are you kidding me? No, this is what we're doing because I am so passionate about it. I believe in it. This is what we need to do. This is how we're going to move forward as a team. That's owning it. You know, if you're having a difficult conversation with an employee that you know you need to let go and you're in that process of letting them go and you say, well, I really didn't want to have to let you go, but corporate's making me. Really? Corporate's making you let that person go. Or my DM's making me. Or, hey, I, well, we need to do this new sales initiative. Uh, my DM really wants us to do it, so we're going to do it. Guys, own it. Your team's going to respect you. Sometimes certain people will like a decision, and other times they won't. Okay? It's pretty cut and dry, right? Some people like it. Some people won't. That's just part of the job. But your goal is to offer clarity. So even those people that appreciate your decision and those that don't, Everyone's going to get clarity. Provide a clear explanation, explanation of why you're doing what you're doing. Good explanations make the decision seem more just and acceptable. It makes sense, right? It, you may not agree with the decision, but as long as it's clearly explained, okay, well, I, I don't agree with it, but I understand you, Stephen, and, and I'll support you. Okay, that's the difference between owning it and passing the buck up the corporate ladder. Now, I want to touch on this real quick. For any store manager here on the on the call that has been or on this on this training that was promoted internally into the same store, so maybe you worked your way up from assistant manager to store manager, and that, that's the store you're taking over where you did your training, or maybe you even worked from an hourly associate all the way up to store manager. These are some real quick tips, and I'm going to go through them. Like it or not, your promotion removes you from your peers. Use all those friends you had that supported you through the process, okay, you are, it, it's just, it's really weird, but as soon as you get promoted, there's a wall that's built there. It's just there. You can't do anything about it. It's not, you can't prevent it. It just happens. So the best thing you can do is, is attack that wall. Attack the status bubble. Openly discuss your new role with your team. Seek feedback. If you make a mistake, make fun of yourself. Don't don't make a mistake and then try to cover it up and say, I'm the boss, so whatever, you know. You made a mistake, have fun with it, okay? Encourage debate, show genuine gratitude for your promotion and, and for your team, be humble. Guys, it's just real simple. Just, you know, break down that barrier. The barrier is going to literally show up like overnight the minute you sign that dotted line. 
but that's okay. Just attack that status bubble day one, break down that wall, have some fun with it, be humble, and you'll be a lot better for it. All right, uh, I want to. We're we're. Uh, I'm just getting through the basics here. We're almost done. There's a lot more training to go, but these are just the basic steps that are going to really help you be successful the first 90 days, which will, again will set the tone for the next 12 months. So, connecting with your team is really important. Spend time with your people in their environment. Don't just call them in your office all day long, right? Don't be that manager who just calls one associate after the other into their office, talk to them. You know, that, those were the one-on-ones, right? You don't want to continue doing that. No, you want to go out, get on the floor, talk to your team, have informal conversations, talk about last night's game, talk about their family, outside activities, even offer help on the projects. Now, I don't want you to get deeply involved in the projects where it takes you away from your store. There's a difference between working on your business versus working in your business. There's a time for that. But, you know, if, if you're walking up to an associate working on re, that's re-merchandising an eight-foot display, you know, say, oh, wow, you know, hey, how you doing, John? How are things going? How, how you know, how what do you think about that game last night? Blah, blah, blah. And then go, oh, hey, you know, it looks like you're short on a few six-inch peg hooks. Can I go get some for you from the back room? Great, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that. what, what do you think that associate's going to think about you? when you're leaving to go get those pay hooks and bring them back. He's going to really, he's going to appreciate that. You know, because most managers will say, hey, John, how you doing? How'd you like that game last night? Blah, 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 right? The normal conversation. And then, okay, well, hey, if you need any help, let me know. Poof. And then they, they're running as fast as they can away from that associate. It's very noticeable when you go from offering that associate some, you know, just casually, hey, let me know if you need any help versus, hey, I noticed you have, you could use some six-inch peg hooks. Let me go grab some from you. Big difference between the two leadership styles. Be that leader. That actually helps. All right? Now, uh, the best thing I ever did when I was a new store manager was getting to know other managers in the district. And it's funny, I've quickly got to know the ones that, you know, were very bitter about their job, bitter about the company, and the ones that were going places and making a difference. And it's pretty funny that the stores that were bitter, the store managers that were bitter, their stores were always the, the, the worst of the worst, right? They're the worst in the district, they're worst in the region, and even worse in the chain. And the stores and then the managers that I talked to that were happy and just full of life, willing to help and positive, they were always number one. Isn't that funny? So connect with the store managers that lift you up. You'll find those pretty quickly. Make sure you find one that can mentor you. The best thing you can do as a new store manager is find an experienced manager that is doing a good job, that is leading the pack, that can lift you up. And avoid the toxic managers like a plague. <clears throat> I have a full lesson on being authentic and showing your passion, and I want to just briefly touch on it right now. Being authentic makes a world of a difference with your team. Do not try to act like you're the new big bad sheriff in town. Being authentic means you show your humanity. It means you stay humble. It means you model the way. And more importantly, you show your passion. Wear your passion on your sleeve. When people listen to you talk and they hear the passion in your voice, they will follow you. They will believe in your vision, they will want to work for you, not, not the company you work for. They want to work for you. So show your passion and be authentic. Benjamin Franklin once said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Being proactive, what does that mean? It means you can't assume that everyone clearly understands you. It also means you need to ask pointed questions. So if you're in a, if you're you know, having a huddle and you're discussing the tasks at hand, again, don't assume that everyone clearly understands you. Ask pointed questions. Say, John, what does that, what do you think that means, you know, to you? What does that mean to you? Or how do you think we can apply this, uh, you know, today? Be very uh, pointed. Ask people to clarify. So maybe when you're talking to somebody about a project and they're saying, yeah, I, I got this done, and, and say, well, can you clarify on, you know, give me a little bit more details on how you completed the project. 
My favorite word, and this should be, you know, one of your best uh, best friends. This this word should be these two words actually should be just um, added to your vocabulary and be a, be words that you use all the time. And that's show me. That should become your favorite word. Don't just take people at their word when they complete a project or they're having an issue. Okay, they're explaining an issue to them, and you and you just assume you know the answer how you're going to fix that, and you just tell them, and then you leave. No, no, no. If I'm having an issue with this display over here, hey, show me what you're talking about. Have them walk you over there and show you. Or if they say, I've completed this task, don't just say, okay, great job. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. No. Great. I really appreciate it. Why don't you show me? Walk me over there. Um, another uh, tip of being proactive. Try to predict challenges before they arise. That takes a little bit more planning on your part, right? You know, if you know you have a 40-hour uh, project ahead of you, you know, two weeks from now as you're looking at the, the future plan, planner book or whatever your company has on, you know, promotion changeouts and things like that, you know, understand the need of that project and make sure you schedule for it. And then make sure you have a backup ready to go. Maybe have an extra person that's working on the floor just in case somebody calls out. You know, really try to predict the challenges that are ahead so you are not busy just, you know, trying to tackle every emergency after every emergency just and every urgent issue. If you can, if you can work your way yourself through those challenges ahead of time and really be proactive about it, it's going to save you a lot of, <laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> it's going to help you get home to your family, you know, at, at 6 o'clock versus 9 p.m. Uh, store culture, we talked a little bit about this. Something that's just really important, guys, I can't emphasize enough. Your, your store culture has been developed over a long period of time, well before you ever got there. So before you make any big changes, be sure to understand how your team is going to react to these changes based on how they reacted in the past, right? Talk to your department managers and your assistant managers. See, and as you're going through these one-on-one -on -one interviews, you're really going to understand how people have reacted to big changes, and that'll help you, you know, how you when you approach making a big change, you know, which direction you're going to take. Um, when you do this, it shows your team that you have a strong appreciation for them, and th this makes you more of an informed leader someone that's worth listening to, the better you understand the past, the quicker you can move forward. I love that. All right. Well, uh, guys, it's an honor to have you join the ranks of leadership. By now, I'm sure it's also a major responsibility, one that sometimes is going to be really stressful. I really would like to encourage you to consider this journey as a marathon, not as a sprint. If you take one step at a time and remember to use the strategies we've just discussed and the ones that we're going to talk about to the rest of the academy, you will not only survive this transition, but you will grow into a very capable leader. So welcome, guys. Welcome to Store Manager Academy. I look forward to working with you through the rest of this coursework, and I look forward to seeing you on the other end of graduation and uh, helping you build that high-performance team that you've always wanted to build and have. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you on the next lesson.